Hello and welcome to this exclusive interview with Dr. Nasir Jamal Khatak, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Sawabi, a renowned educationist, social reformer and a visionary in Pakistan. Dr. Khatak's immense contributions to the field of education have made him a true inspiration for students in Pakistan and around the world. As a professor of English and the head of one of the most prestigious universities in the country, Dr. Khatak has played a pivotal role in shaping the future of education in Pakistan. In this talk, we'll delve into his journey, his thoughts on education, his vision for the future of education in Pakistan, and much more. So sit back, relax, and join us in this fascinating conversation with Dr. Nasir Jamal Khatak. It's an honor, Dr. Khatak, to have you. Thank you Thank for you. letting us learn from you. Thank you. My first question to you is this. Could you share with us what drew you to take up English as a subject and pursue a career in academia? Um, my grandfather was a teacher. Um, two of my uncles were teachers. Um, so I would hear a lot about how they had students and, you know, who would come and visit them. And those students perhaps would talk about how my grandfather and my uncles uh, left their mark on, on yes. them, etc., etc., etc. So maybe um, as a young kid, uh, that is what I had in the back of my mind. Um, for me, my grandfather uh, continues to be my ideal. Right. So knowing that he was a teacher, perhaps I, I think I also wanted to be like him. Um, why I was drawn to English or how, I don't exactly know how. Uh, but this was one of the subjects in which I was, uh, compared to other subjects, I, I would do much better. Right. And compared to the rest of the students, I, I, I somehow did very well in English. Right. Um, when it entered my imagination, because it's, you know, I, I come from Karak, where um, the only time you hear English is on TV or on radio. Yes. Um, so how, you know, it entered my imagination, why I was fascinated with it, I do not know. Right. Um, but one uh, reason perhaps, again, is my grandfather, who right. um, when I was um, in my first year, gave me a book by Burton Russell, Why I'm right. Not a Christian. Yes. And there were others as well, but perhaps that was one of the books that I continue to love. Um, which is like, you know, hey, I think I need to read a little more in English yes. or I re re need to read more books, right. you know, written in English. I, uh, until then, perhaps I was reading books that were written in Urdu. Yes. So um, maybe that's the reason. Uh, but somehow um, I, I was, as you said, drawn to it, but I don't know why. Right. Um, my, my grandfather, again, would would quote Ghalib and uh, uh, Hafiz Shirazi right. um, and other poets and it's like, you know, and Sheikh Saadi. It's like, I, I, I wish I could do that, you know. Right. So um, maybe in the back of my mind, that is what I had that, you know, I decided to do my master's in English. My parents wanted me to be a doctor. Yeah. My family wanted me to be a doctor, knowing that the sight of blood yeah. would make me faint. Even if I would see a dead chicken, yes. it's like I would faint. But still, they wanted me to be a doctor. Um, and I'm glad that I didn't become a doctor. Not that yeah. being a doctor is not a good yeah. thing. But perhaps, you know, I would have been doing a job. Yeah. I wouldn't have been doing something that I was passionate about. I think I uh, have a point here. Mm -hmm. Here in Pakistan, I've noticed that every single person wants to be either a doctor or an engineer. Right. And I think... Um, uh, the, the thing is, it's just uh, Or culture. you want to join uh, yeah. the army or uh, yeah. the civil service. So there are these two or three paths that well, everybody has in mind. That, and that's a very typical middle class exactly. desire. Because the middle class uh, wants to have a means to achieving quick bucks. Correct. Uh, you know, earn quick money. Yes. So I think these professions, four yeah. of them, being a doctor, being an engineer, yeah. being an army officer, <coughs> and being a civil servant or a bureaucrat 
I think they earn you or they help you earn yeah. quick money. So I think that that's why yeah. most people want to do that. Exactly. Yeah. But I think the world of education extends far beyond medicine and uh, you know engineering. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's so many absolutely. options that absolutely. students uh, you know could pursue. Absolutely. And I think it's important to think beyond right. beyond that because it's not statistically possible for everyone to be a doctor nor that's necessary as no, you said. No, no. We need a lot more other professions, a lot more other true. professions in Pakistan. True. To, true. For our development and progress. True, true. We need I think we need more thinkers. Exactly. And uh, not that doctors don't think. Yeah, uh, I hope they do, uh, <laughs> and and all the engineers, and I hope they do too. I wouldn't say much about the other two professions, but um, I, I think we need more thinkers. Exactly. Um, who mm, social scientists who think, uh, people who are from humanities who exactly. think, because um, they are the ones who you know come up with ideas that shape perhaps my tomorrow or Correct. our tomorrow. Yes. Um, you know, so um, so I agree with you. We we need more people um, who perhaps uh, don't go towards uh, medicine or engineering yeah. or any other field exactly. which I think earns them quick back. Um, that actually brings me to the next question. Mm -hmm. As an educationist, you have a vast experience in the field and a profound insight into the education system of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the challenges, apart, of course, from this one that every student wants to be either doctor or an engineer? Okay. What are the other challenges? Oh, quite a few. Um, first, as a, as a country, we do not know what we want our education to do. We don't to know. like, that. yes. Um, since countries, you know, have schools, colleges, and universities, we are a country, we also have schools, colleges, yes. and universities. Um, which is why every now and then, uh, you know, every government that comes makes one or another mandatory subject. Yes. So if I want to be a computer scientist, I may not be studying as many computer courses as I might be studying of, let's say, my religion. Yes. Or of the history of Pakistan. Uh, so which means that, um, you know, um, I, I as, a, as a country do not know what I want yeah. uh, my citizen to be like. Yeah. Uh, so, so that that's the biggest sense of challenge. direction. That, that's we the need biggest a sense challenge. of direction, right? And since we don't know what we want education to do, we don't even know if we education I is our priority. Exactly, it isn't. Yes. Uh, which is why each time there is a budget, um, you know, um, made, yeah. or when they realize that they are short of money, one sector which faces a serious yeah. slash is education. Education goes down the list. It does. And ironically, uh, our belief system says that it's uh, farz for all of us. Exactly. But it's not even, you know, one of those optional, distant optional uh, choices that we have. Yes. Um, so since it's not a state priority, it doesn't get uh, the attention, it doesn't get the resources that it should. Uh, which is why most of the times we talk about how our education standard, standard continues to drop down. And how most of the times people think about how in the past, you know, a plain matriculate was was much better than how a graduate is today. Exactly. Um, while you know one can blame uh, nostalgia for it because we love to look at the past, but I think there is some truth in that this too. Is truth. Because in the past, um, in schools, um, we wanted our kids to learn how to think. Yes. Now we want our kids to learn what to think. Yes. Someone has done the thinking for them. Yeah. And for me, you know, like uh, not having it as a priority or not having enough resources, they are problems. Yes. But they're not such big problems. Yeah. The biggest problem is um, we, we want our education to produce uh, graduates whom I call half-baked. Yes. Um, you know, I have a degree, but I'd, I'm not an independent thinker. Exactly. Uh, someone has done the thinking for me. Yeah. I just follow that. And that's the biggest challenge. Um, another one is how perhaps we believe in numbers. Yes. Um, so we may have a big, big, big number of, you know, PhDs. Yes. But if you put all of us together, the, you know, the, the assets, the intellectual assets yes. that I should have in my account, they don't come close to... Exactly what we should have. Yeah. So these are some of 
the challenges I, I think, think yeah. yeah and also as you talked of numbers uh, brings to my mind uh, you know the issue of research right research is is like a hard thing around the world right but I've noticed in Pakistan uh, most students and even some faculty members right they're after numbers right so when you look at uh, the, the research uh, publications you true. see a big number true. but when you uh, go deep into it there's right. no substance that is true so but I that's that's because I think um, we are a people uh, who want to check boxes yes do you have research papers yes yeah. how many 15 yeah. is that good enough to help you become a professor yes so let's make yeah. him a professor so um, you know we check boxes and um, since it's not a priority, yes. um, I'm not as committed to doing my research as I should be or as I could have been. And more important than these is perhaps the reason how I was never encouraged. My, my edu educational background, my academic culture does not help me learn how to think. Exactly. For research, um, if you have a problem with how to think, you may be mimicking research, but you're not doing research. So which is why the numbers will be very, very high when you mimic yes. research. So I'm mimicking research. Yeah. I'm not doing research. I, I need to have you know, a very, very large number yeah. of papers for me to qualify for this or qualify for that. Exactly. But my research doesn't have the kind of impact that it exactly. should have. And in most cases, if, if I've come, up, come with a degree from outside, yes. Um, the technology or the knowledge or the skills that I acquired there, I have not been able to indigenize those skills yeah. here. So, um, so I am physically in, in Pakistan, but intellectually perhaps I still work exactly. in the same space yes. where the data was collected, yes. which is far, far away from here. Mm -hmm. And since I never learned how to think, I never acquired the skill of how to indigenize that, yeah, how to that think skill. Myself here exactly. This. So my so my research has nothing to do with my immediate environment. Yes. So I'm I'm uh, ineffectively beating yeah. my wings in the air exactly. without flying. Yes. You know? yeah. And I think the lesson here should be for students to have research. Research should be encouraged, but not to do it just for the sake of number of publications. True. True. Yeah. See, th that's what one thing that I tell my colleagues, that, you know, we open a university today and the next day it begins to churn out PhDs. Yes, exactly. We don't have the kind of maturity, infrastructural maturity, academic maturity, Correct. intellectual maturity for the university to produce PhDs. Of high so caliber. We, exactly. So we, we, we just look at this, you know, we, we start with the minimum. Yes. How, how many PhDs do we need in a department to start PhDs? Yes. Three. How many do we have? Three. Let's start. Yes. You know, so, um, so we, we end up producing PhDs yes. who perhaps do not have as much Correct. Um, of, you know, mm, knowledge with them, unfortunately, as they should. Yes. Yeah. Okay. My other question is uh, related to our culture. You know, we are all proud of being Pukhtuns and we are proud of our culture. Yet in some societies, including the Pukhtun culture, people are resistant to change and right. new ideas. How do you think we can tackle this resistance to promote progress and development? Well, um, when you uh, resist change, and that I think is driven by fear. Yes. You're afraid. Yes. And that's why, you know, you, you don't accept or embrace change. Yes. And in, in, in this part of the world, I think fear is one of those things which perhaps um, is either genuinely there yeah. or is artificially created. Yeah. In both cases, yes, in both cases, it's going to make me averse to change. Yes. Why I am afraid of change is because when in the past there was some change, it was hardly ever uh, brought about after taking me into account. Yes. No. So they changed things for me, yes. what they believed was good for me. Yes. Nobody ever asked me what yeah. I thought was good for me, yes. you know. So, which means that, you know, change <coughs> did not come from yeah. the proverbial grassroots. Yes. It came from the top yes. to bottom. Yeah. Now, any change that comes from the top External to bottom. External change. Exactly. Is exactly. That's, yes. that's not like... And I think that's a very important point yeah. because as a psychiatrist, I can attest to that and that 
exists in our culture, not uh, only at the level of uh, you know the government or policy making, but down to the family system. True. You know we haven't been uh, actually encouraged to think for ourselves. True. So we live in a society where everything is made for us, created yeah, for yeah, us, yeah. Uh, out of the fear even uh, you know that people, they or parents or you know or loved ones, out of the fear that something might happen to us. So we don't actually get to, to learn anything. That's we true. don't experiment. And when true. you don't take risks, you See, don't think... The, the problem is that if I have kids, I don't unconsciously think of them as an extension exactly. of me. Yes. I think of them more as my pets, exactly. whom I carry around in cages, yes. who have to do things as I tell them they should. Yes. Um, so, which means the, the, the capacity to think, that is somehow curtailed. stopped, curtailed, yes. um, in what we call home. Exactly. You know, it's so ironic. I can't agree with you yeah. more. Yeah. I think that's one of the, the tragedies of our society especially, mm -hmm. because elsewhere in many countries, it may be present to some extent, but especially in our Pukhtun culture, right. I think this uh, uh, creativity, right. ability to think, take decisions, it's highly discouraged. Well, that's because I think we exist on a physical level. Yes. And so instead of winning over hearts, we believe in controlling bodies. Exactly. So instead of appealing to people's mind, exactly. we would rather scare the body. Yes. So my kids... Take the rod and Exactly. Teach a lesson. My yeah. kids are quiet before me, not because I have made them speechless with yes. my ideas exactly. or actions, but because if they talk, I'm going to snub them or I'm yes. going to insult them. So they would rather keep quiet. And I take pride yes. in having obedient kids. Exactly. You know? So we somehow try to have people who are obedient. Yeah. Obedience is perhaps one of the most horrible things exactly. that a human can have. You shouldn't exactly. be obedient. We actually equate um, fear with respect. Exactly. So like, you know, when, when I get into a class, when I go into a class, yes. I usually ask students why they stand for me. They say, oh, because we respect you. I said, no, you don't yes. respect me. Yes. You're afraid of me. Yes. Respect is when you um, do things in the absence of the person who asked you to do those exactly. things. Exactly. So if I tell you to do your homework, yeah. you come up with all excuses, yes. um, but you don't do your homework. Yeah. So, so if the you, if fear is there, but respect. Ex exactly. Generally so, respect. so you do your, your homework, not because you want yes. to listen to me, but you do your homework because you lose the credit. So if yes. there is a homework we, for which you are not going to be given marks or grades, mm -hmm. you don't do that. Yes. But, but if there is a grad at, grade attached to it, or if there, is, there are marks attached to it, yes. then you are likely to you know, do that work. Exactly. Yeah. The, my next question is in the same vein. Right. We as a society pride ourselves on our gallantry and valor. Right. Yet I feel there's nothing honorable or valorous about being arrogant, aggressive, or vengeful. Right. Do you think these values may be overly glamorized in our culture? Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think we have to revisit our notion of courage. Yes. Um, Arms I and guns and yeah, display of... Yeah. Uh, I think, um, you know, most of us unfortunately believe that if I scream at the top of my yes. lungs, that makes my argument really very, Stronger. very strong. Um, one. Two. As I said before, we are a people who live on a physical level. Yes. So we think in terms of muscles. We don't, don't yes. think in terms of brains. Exactly. So, which is why, you know, we are going to do things which will um, show sh use of sheer force, yeah. then appeal to my mind exactly. or then appeal to my intellect. So if, for example, we look at, you know, um, the notion of gallantry, as you call yes. it, bravery, I usually tell my kids, um, I personally think that if somebody uses foul language for you yeah. and you have the ability to absorb it yeah. and not smack the exactly. person across his face or her face, yes. then that means that's you're courage. brave. Yeah, that's, that's courage. courage. Yeah. That's, that, that means that's you're real, brave. Yeah. Okay? Similarly, the, the, uh, the notion of honor, the, you know, the twisted notion of honor that we Pukhtuns have, yes. we need to reconsider that. Exactly. So if, for example, somebody does something which I find 
undesirable. Yes. Um, and if I go and hurt that person yeah. to the extent of hurting him, her really, yeah. really badly, that is not being exactly. honorable. Yes. Look, I, I don't think there is any honor in hurting other people. Yeah. I don't think there is any honor in forget about yeah. killing. Yeah. You know, I don't think there is any honor yeah. in beating up my my kids or my wife exactly. or my sister or our sisters yeah. or, or, or anyone for that matter. I think this you know? message needs to go to all of us and everybody needs to understand this because uh, somehow we feel like being aggressive is honorable but I think there's yeah. nothing there is nothing noble about taking out your knife to stab another person. No, Stabbing not at someone all. Not at is all. far easier than uh, actually tolerating. Well, we at physically assault people yeah. because unconsciously we declare we don't have any intellectual way of handling exactly, that person. No matter. So yeah. we get to, you know, we, we get even with him or we, we try to be even with him on physical levels. Yes. I run out of arguments, so I'm going to punch you. Exactly. I, instead of saying it's like, yeah. yeah, I think it makes sense, yeah. and thank you for pointing yeah. this out to me. Yeah, let me which think mean, about it. Exactly, yeah. which would mean that there is some sort of an addition to my yes. knowledge and my attitude towards life. So instead of thanking that person, yeah. I would rather, you know, sit on a high self-righteous horse yes. and declare the right person wrong yeah. and hit him, her. Yeah, to administer with, correction by exactly, beating with, the Exactly, with one thing or another and take yeah. pride in that. I yeah. mean, how much more twisted can one be? Exactly. You know? I think uh, in the last 10 years or so, Pakistani society has changed and not for the better. People have become intolerant and opinionated. Having a healthy debate these days is quite challenging right whether it's about politics or faith or any other issue how can we tackle this I would call it alarming situation it is very alarming in fact um, sometime back I read a research paper in which the researcher accused not accused said I shouldn't say yeah. accused the researcher then, said that uh, people in Pakistan are suffering from mass schizophrenia yeah and for you as a psychiatrist, that well, might this is be something I heard also yeah. uh, from one of uh, my seniors. Right. And uh, he said the same thing, so right. I can relate to that. So, so we need to ask ourselves why we are like that. Yeah. Okay. If, for example, like, you know, we say in Pashto, if, if I take a few rocks and every day I talk to those rocks yes. about one thing. Yes. And then wherever that rock goes, the yes. rock hears about that one thing yes. everywhere. Rocks don't talk, yes. but that rock is going to talk. Yes. You know? So we are like that. Yes. If you open our textbooks, yeah. we glamorize killing people. Yes. Um, you know, those, um, if, if you look at our heroes, yeah. they're not doctors who yes. save lives. They are, you know, fighters. A few people and they're... They're fighters, yeah. and, uh, and 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 uh, fi what do fighters do? They kill. Yes. So our our heroes are not engineers. Yeah. What do engineers do? They build bridges. Yes. Who are our heroes? Exactly. Our heroes are those people who raise walls. Yes. We don't need more walls. Exactly. We need bridges who which can connect, connect. people. Yes. So um, why we are like that? Why we have become so intolerant is because. Um, intolerance is is the you know is, is promoted in a way I would yes. say why because instead of um, helping me see how you and I are similar my society my education system yes. my state the yeah. national it emphasizes on the differences differences you yes. know? and I think this polarization is just dangerous for our society absolutely because the way it's headed I Abs don't know where it's gonna get Abs absolutely absolutely yes. so like if, if, if you look at the um, the park study as we call it that we teach uh, the, the subject of park study um, you know it's like God it's it's full of lies um, where we have created a self Yes. which has nothing to do with reality. Exactly. So I begin to believe that that is what I am, yeah. as Park's theory shows yeah. me. And then I get into real life, yeah. and I understand that it I... It has no connection exactly, with, that I don't with that concocted story. 
Yes, I think so. I'm at yes. war with myself. Exactly. The two selves that I deal with. Yes. The one that I'm sold and yeah. the other that I deal with. I think. And the, the two are poles yeah. apart. Yeah. The fiction in the textbooks has nothing to do with, or is quite different from True. the reality on the ground. True. I think True. that's that's very right. True. Uh, Dr. Khadak, what's your vision for the University of Sawabi? Where do you see this varsity in the next few years? Well, I hope it becomes financially. Uh, independent. independent, it isn't, yes. um, unfortunately, and it continues to lose the resources, and the main resource is the state. Yes, the state continues to slash the funding. Yes, um, even though you know we have tried to be as frugal with our available resources as we can, but there are things that you have to do in the university. Yes. You know, so um, so that is one thing that that I I hope that we managed to do. Um, another one is, um, you know, that it should think about vertical growth. Yes. That it shouldn't open more disciplines. Yes. Um, it should focus on strengthening the yeah. one that it has. Um, third, I have a hope yes. that it attracts students yeah. from outside the immediate neighborhood. Yes. Most of our students are from the immediate neighborhood. Yes which is not how universities should be. Yes. Universities should be centers of diversity. Yeah, attract people from everywhere. Right. So, um, but I think I would blame that lack of diversity on not having hostels. Yes. So hopefully in the few years to come, yeah. um, that for which we have planned, the few years for which we have planned, um, we will have our hostels and which will hopefully attract students from yeah. all over uh, Pakistan. Um, and another, um, you know, part of, uh, you know, not a vision, but, you know, my wish is that, um, you know, it, it produces uh, good quality graduates yes. uh, who at least, um, if don't know how to think for themselves, yes. at least question things, yes. you know, and, and, and that is one thing that that I would want our, our graduates to do, to yes. understand that there's nothing wrong with asking questions yes. and that it is not absolutely essential that we must find answers yes. to the questions that we ask, yes. but that we must ask questions. So these are some of the things that I wish the University of Sawabi can do. Um, financial independence will be, will be more important and then vertical growth, yes. and then having diversity and then having, you know, attracting quality yes. teachers. Um, at the moment, we are in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, which is why we perhaps um, do not attract as many good teachers as, as we potentially can. So uh, let's hope that you know um, whoever comes, um, whoever is the next, whoever the next VC is, um, follows the same, follows you know, the yeah, the same goals. Yeah. Well, not yeah. my steps, but you know, uh, brings his her own vision yes. and tries to adjust our you know plans in our programs yeah. uh, with his her vision as well yes. not drop them down altogether yeah. and um, and and that will hopefully help the university of sawabi yeah. more well i have no doubt that under your great auspices the university of sawabi will become one of the best it is already one of the best universities but it um, your your vision will place it on the map and i think it will attract uh, what students. thank you it's it's very kind of you um you know i i i hope that we become one of the best um and and we are trying yeah. um we have challenges but we have a hope that from my short know. visit today to the varsity i've seen that uh, the dedication with which everyone is working down to the laborers who are fixing you know yeah. the um, iron railings and uh, right. the gardeners <laughs> i i have thank no you. doubt that uh, it will soon uh, reach a different level in the next you know, higher level. You one of, know, one of the things that I try to do is to have a team, um, autonomous team, yes. which can work without being told what they need to do. Yes. You know, m most of the times in most universities, they look up to the VC. I yes. tell them, no, no, don't look up to me. And Let's sit together. And whatever the collective wisdom decides is what we do. Yes. And, um, and, and, and if we could do that, 
um, yes. you know, um, I think Universal Sobi will be well off then yes. in the days to come. Yeah. Dr. Khatak, on a personal level, yeah. do you have any hobbies or interests outside oh, yes. your professional work? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I love to um, read. Yes. Um, you know, so, but that, I, that shouldn't even be a hobby. It, it's more of a mandatory thing. Yes. But I'm, I'm very fond of fountain pens. Wow. I love fountain pens. Okay. And uh, I'm very fond of music. Uh, I'm very fond of Atana. Yes. And uh, so uh, listening to music uh, is, is one of the things that I do regularly. Wonderful. And playing with my fountain pens, cleaning them, filling yes. them up, that's another, you know, thing that I do. And um, trekking, uh, yeah. going into mountains. Yes. Um, you know, because I think that's a very humbling experience. You know, when you're surrounded by mighty mountains, yes. uh, you think of yourself as a small little particle. Yes. And uh, so these are some of the yeah. things that I like yeah. to do in my free time. Yeah. I want to ask my final question. Sure. As an English professor, yeah. what do you see as the value of teaching language and literature in today's world? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I think um, we need to understand societies around us. Yeah. We don't have the resources to visit different societies to understand them. Yes. The next closest thing that can help us understand other societies is to study literature, yeah. their literature, our literature. So for me to be able to know who I am, I need to understand my literature. Yes. I need to study my literature. And for me to be able to understand the kind of people that I have around me in my immediate or distant neighborhood, yeah. I need to study their literature as well. Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to know what they are doing, by they I mean my neighbors and everybody, mm -hmm. I need to understand and need to have proficiency in their language. Yes. So um, learning how to speak the language of others is a tool, is a means to getting to know those people better. So I think that if we ever needed um, to learn other languages and if we ever needed to yeah. study other literatures, now is the time. Yes. And perhaps that could help Pakistan become yeah. uh, a tolerant society. Give us different perspectives. Oh yeah, on, absolutely. On things. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, you. Dr. Khatak, for taking the time to speak uh, to us today. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure to hear your thoughts and insights. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah.